Shalom, Kahlo, Yahweh, Bashanah, Washai, Bashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, it be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Aquaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. Uh, this is from the book, um, The Image of Black and Western Art. I've gone into this book in the past. Um, and that basically even the cover shows you how Greece was translated from dark fleshed uh, Japhetic people to to uh, pale people. And I just watched the movie uh, The Nightingale. And the truth of the matter is this woman looks like the woman that was raped by the... Uh, by the so-called white man, the, the Edomite uh, soldiers in the middle of the, uh, out there in the bush, in the outback. All right? See, she looks, she looked just like that woman. All right? Um, because that's what Esau Edom does. They translate, you know, kingdoms violently to them, to themselves, and they rape and murder as they're doing it. But this, uh, this is going to be a quick video because it's going to be a part two. Um, all these pages here that I have, I'm going to uh, up to this marker. I just want to flip through and show some things. Um, but before I go any further, let me let me read a scripture. Set the camera down. This is Psalms 85 and 11, and it reads, Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So the truth that's springing out of the earth are the artifacts that are, that are being dug up and, and that have been dug up and represented, even though they haven't been represented in Hollywood and in movies. And this is why, you know, so-called white people have a hard time when truth like this comes out. All right. Um, you know, just like this right here, they got, you know, you got Achilles and Hector, um, the Spartan generals, all these characters in the Iliad. But the truth be said, the, the Alexander of Macedon, the so-called white, so-called white people, the Edomites, because Alexander's his bloodline can be traced back to Amalek, who was his grandson of Esau Edom. Um, they didn't take over Greece. This didn't happen to Greece until, you know, many, many years after that battle. OK, so. Uh, but let's read what's going on here. Let's let's get it into focus. It says uh, 150 and 151. These are the, uh, the numbers of these these uh, of these these images. It says the scenes of Heracles, Hercules fighting against the Egyptians. Uh, Heracles slaying Berseus the priest, uh, side B, the soldiers coming to aid Berseus. So this big, huge black dude was killing, destroying all these priests. And these soldiers who were your, uh, your Greeks were coming to fight against Hercules. All right. So these were the ruling class people in that land. All right. And as you begin to look at the images, that's what you see. So when this war went on, what you're looking at, you know, these weren't the people that were there. All right. So the art is, is telling a story that this, that uh, Hollywood and Esau isn't. Okay. And that and that Spartan thing is very touchy because Esau holds proudly to that. And the Spartans was, were, were Israelites, so-called black people. All right. And the Bible bears record to that. That's why the Bible Destruction Group, which operated for 100 years and from the 17 to the 1800s, about mid about, about mid 1700s to about mid 1800s, successfully removed the Apocrypha from the uh, the Bible. The Apocrypha is just so damaging to the false narrative which has been created through Hollywood and through textbooks. All right? Because it, it clearly tells you that the Spartans in, in 2 Maccabees, uh, the, the 11th chapter, the 12th chapter, and I believe the 16th chapter, it clearly tells you that the Spartans are of the stock of Abraham. They're sons of Abraham. They were Israelites. All right? And that now so, but Esau has, you know, lied about that. So now they will put them in conflict with other white people. <laughs> you know? Because the fake Jews... Uh, don't want to claim them because that would that would open up a can of worms that they don't want to speak about or talk about either. All right, but uh, in this book, 
Let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, one looking for this, but it says, uh, but this is page eight in uh, Frank R. Snowden's book, Blacks in Antiquity. And it talks about uh, coloring varying from the reddish brown to deep brownish black, tightly curled and wiry described. Uh, woolly, frizzy, kinky, broad, broad nose, uh, thick lips, usually puffy and inverted prognosis often marked at subnasal region. So reddish brown color variant, reddish brown, that's your ruddy. All right. Because Memnon is referred to as being ruddy, but he's described as looking like this. All right. So that, that dark reddish brown, those reddish tones that you see in dark skin, like those men. See, those men are ruddy. So Esau, you know, it's like we said, Esau changed, makes up words, change the meaning of words just to win arguments. Okay, because they'll try to use the word ruddy and then make it a, a, a red, a, a, a white person. But then try to try, try to get away from, from Esau being, being ruddy. <laughs> you know? It's funny, but they'll try to make King, King David ruddy. But the truth of this, according to their definition, but the truth of the matter, King David was ruddy, meaning he was he was brown with reddish with those reddish tones, and more than likely he was a lighter cut complected brown too, just going by his uh his uh, uh you know his descriptions. So I'm trying to find a portion. Here it is, found it. The water you held by Shana was shy. And I'm just going to focus on it. It says uh, right here in the uh, physical characteristics, all right, of Ethiopians, the archaeological evidence, all right? It says, art in some respects more valuable than the literature or source of info as a source of information for the anthropological data because it tells much that the text does not all right about about the uh amount of prognatism or its total absence so this text all right if you were reading about you know this oh put a tear in it didn't mean to do that this is this is is telling you a lie this is this text all right, even though we're looking at images, but but via text is how you learned about this stuff in, in history books. All right, and then when the images were presented, they were presented like this. But when you go back to the time frame where these events took place, this was what was there. This is what was dug up. So wait a minute. Somebody is lying. All right, so let me go to one of my favorite scriptures and close this out. Uh this is uh, Deuteronomy 33 and 29. And it reads, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by Yahweh. All right? The shield of thy help, and who is thy sword, who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Thou shalt tread upon their high places. So videos are like this are really for the newer people who are waking up to this truth. Just so you have solid uh, concrete evidence to, to use to, uh, um, to defend the gospel when you present it to your family and friends or, or anyone who tries to come against it. That's the main reason I do this. Uh, all the seasoned people in this truth, they already know this. This is really more for more so for you for you newer viewers. So with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Wakakudash, Wa Ababa Ba, Kwam Yasharala.